Remember the good old days of the pandemic? Oh, yes. I mean, sure, there was some death and destruction and stuff like that, but the good part about it was you didn't have to see anyone. Like, you could just stay home. You could always use it as an excuse. Oh, I, I know. I've got, I'm afraid of COVID. Can't come see you. Can't come to your stupid little Christmas party this year. Sorry, COVID. Well, now we're past the pandemic, and all the Christmas parties are starting up again. And there's only one Christmas party you're going to want to be at this holiday season. Yes, it's happening right here where I sit. The Studios America 2022 Christmas Party Power Hour, Friday, December 9th. The date being announced here for the very first time. Go to stewdoespowerhour.com. There you can sign up and you can come join us. You can actually be here in studio with us. And I don't know, maybe take a couple of Glenn's historical artifacts. I mean, just pocket a couple of them on your way out. I mean, you, you, you can't pocket this one, but you can pass by the Rush Limbaugh microphone, all the incredible uh, stuff that we have here. You can check that out on your way in. And then you can watch us be idiots drinking one shot of beer per minute for an hour while trying to talk politics. It's a mess. It's a lot of fun. It's a great way to celebrate the holidays. Yes, don't be with your family. Be with us. StuDoesPowerHour.com. It's Friday, December 9th, the 2022 Christmas Party Power Hour. Join us right here. StuDoesPowerHour.com. BlazeTV.com slash stew is the place to go to subscribe to Blaze TV. Use the promo code stew. Save yourself 10 bucks. If you're watching on YouTube, well, I mean, you're watching for free, so thank you so much. If you wouldn't mind liking the video right now, that would be fantastic. And I think we're going to do a Q&A tomorrow, a live Q&A. So if you are uh, interested in that, click the bell as well. It'll alert you when these uh, live broadcasts do begin. Glenn Beck is going to be here to tell us how to survive being an enemy of the state. And he's got a lot of experience with that particular thing. We've got the latest on the missiles that struck near the border in Poland yesterday. But we start by doing Donald Trump part three. Yes, Trump part three is here. The third run. Well, it's actually I mean, if you count, though, like the reform party thing, you're going back a little bit. It's really we'll give it part three here just to kind of keep this. These are in canon. Right. The, the reform party thing, that was some side project, some fan fiction. I don't know what that was. This is the part three in canon. And that's where we are. Donald Trump is running again. He announced it last night in a shocking, stunning moment that no one saw coming. Here's Donald Trump. In order to make America great and glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for president of the United States. There you go. That's simple. And he's back in the race. Of course, the first person in the race here going for the 2024 presidential election. And if you thought like there was an off season for elections, that that era is over. There's people running for stuff all the time now. That's all there is. Uh, Ron DeSantis, of course, the the other guy people talk about is the potential Republican nominee, not the only person who might run. We'll get into that here in a second. But Ron DeSantis has had this uh, back and forth a little bit with I don't even want to say back and forth. Donald Trump said a couple of nasty things about DeSantis. Not too much, especially for his standards. It wasn't, I mean, he said, said much worse things about Glenn Beck. Um, but, uh, you know, it wasn't a big, a big, big thing. But people are talking about, well, is it right for him to be criticizing DeSantis? Uh, and of course, obviously, the press wants to create this big thing between the two candidates. And so they asked Ron DeSantis about it. Here's what he had to say. I'd like to know what you think about Trump's Big announcement and some of the less than flattering comments he has made about you. Well, you know, one of the things I've learned, like learned in this job is um, uh, when you're do when you're leading, when you're getting getting things done. Yeah, you take incoming fire. That's just the nature of it. Uh, I roll out of bed in the morning. I've got corporate media outlets that have a spasm. Just the fact that I'm getting up in the morning and it's constantly attacking. And this is just what's happened. I don't think any governor got attacked more, particularly by corporate media, than me over my four-year term. And yet, I think what you, what you learn is, all that's just noise. And there you go. I mean, I, I think that's the right tone uh, for him to be taking on this. No reason to get into some big battle. At some point, if he does decide to run, 
they'll be on stage. They will go after each other. They'll go after each other's records. I'm sure some names will be fired back and forth. But that's a far, a far distance away from where we are right now. So what are we looking at here? A lot of people think it's either Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis. However, we've talked to a couple of uh, insiders who have been through the studios here recently, and they think as many as nine uh, other senators may run. You know, senators, governors may run. The other guy who looks almost like a sure thing is Larry Hogan, who is a more of liberal Republican, kind of going to run as an anti-Trump wing. I don't think he has any chance, but he was a popular governor of Maryland for a couple terms. Uh, so there is a probably a big list. We're probably going to see something like we saw back in 2016. I didn't. I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think that's going to going to do a lot of positive things for the party, but. It all depends on when the people start dropping out. If they do what they did last time and stay in the race all the way through, it's going to spread the field out so much that no one's going to have a high percentage of the vote. And you're going to probably get your candidate elected with 30, 32 percent of the vote. And that's that's not ideal. You'd like to do better than that. Uh, But I was thinking about this. Who might run? What's the list look like? I can come up with a list. I could give you the names of people you've thought of before, but I thought it'd be more entertaining to actually go to a sports book, an overseas sports book that allows you to bet on who will be the Republican nominee in 2024 and look through the list. And I was surprised to see they have 25 candidates, 25 possibilities for you to vote on right now. And honestly, there's some missing here. I think there's more you could add. Some of them are a little bit bizarre and out there, but I figured we just go through this list because this is kind of fascinating to me. Um, 25 of them. Some of them realistic, some of them not, and then we'll get to the top and we'll reveal who is number one on the countdown. All right, let's start at number 25. Yes, number 25 is Jared Kushner. Now, I don't think this is very likely. I don't think Jared Kushner has any interest in this. I don't think there's a huge passion for Jared Kushner to be the nominee. Uh, He is at 1,000 to 1. So you bet 100 bucks, he runs, he becomes the nominee, you get 100,000 bucks. Not a bad gig, I guess, if you can, if you, uh, if you got a, a hundred bucks to throw around. But I, you know, a real long shot, Jerry Kushner at 25. And what, what's interesting about that one is listen to some of the names that are ahead of him as we go forward. I mean, Jerry Kushner was. We were told Jerry Kushner was basically running the government for a time. And you'd think he'd be ahead of some of the people that are going to be ahead of him on this list. But let's go on. Number 24 on the list, Lindsey Graham. 500 to 1. Now, Lindsey Graham really wants to be president. Lindsey Graham wants everyone to listen to him all the time and do whatever he says. He has a really crappy voting record. I don't know if anyone knows this, but he does say things every once in a while in hearings that that endear him to the right, which is why he's the senator. I mean, look, Tim Scott is considerably better than Lindsey Graham, but Lindsey Graham's the one that gets all the attention, and uh, he's on this list at 500 to 1. Next up, number 23, Condoleezza Rice. Now, I don't think there's any chance Condoleezza Rice is going to run for president in 2024. She's turned it down many, many times. There was a time in which she would have been maybe the number one candidate. I don't know when I would say that was. Maybe 2012, 2000, uh, 2008 maybe. But uh, her time is uh, long gone. And also she does not want to be president. There's no reason to believe this. Uh, she's at 500 to 1. Now think of what I've just described. A former Secretary of State, uh, a leading senator, a guy who is apparently running the entire government according to the media. All those people have longer odds to become president of the United States than our next uh, entry at 250 to 1. Candace Owens. Oh, I got Candace Owens at 22. You got Liz Cheney? I got 20, 22. Candace Owens. There she is. Candace Owens. <laughs> <laughs> Candace Owens at 250 to 1. Now, Candace obviously is a commentator. She's over at the Daily Wire. A lot of people, she's got a big uh, base of support. I don't think the chances are particularly high that she's the president. Is she even old enough to be president? Can someone check her age? How old is Candace Owens? Will she, is she 35? I don't know. I don't, I don't know, honestly. No, I know who she is, obviously. I just don't know all that much about her personal stuff. But the, she's got a f- four times better chance than poor Jared Kushner. I mean, that's uh, quite a statement. Twice as much as Condoleezza Rice or Lindsey Graham. Candace Owens, 250 to 1. It's an interesting entry on the list. You, we did just reveal this next one at number 21 is Liz Cheney. Now, that, now Liz Cheney may very well actually run for president. 
I don't think she would run as a as an independent. I think the Liz Cheney wing of the party will coalesce around and she's not in the party anymore, I don't think, but will coalesce around somebody who can who can be the uh, anti-Trump nominee, someone who will say Donald Trump is really bad. You should elect me. You know, we should you know, we should have impeached Donald Trump and all those things. You know, the January 6th committee. Uh, their favorite candidate of the Republican Party. One interesting aspect of that, though, and you might say, oh, God, I don't want to have them in the race. And that might be true, um, although she's not going to make much of a difference to Donald Trump. I mean, no one, no one who's thinking about voting for Donald Trump is going to instead vote for Liz Cheney. What might actually uh, be interesting here is Ron DeSantis, as he might run, doesn't want to be seen as the anti-Trump candidate either. He's not an anti-Trump candidate, right? Like they typically they've been able to get along. They've worked together. They've endorsed each other. I mean, if you look back at the ads that uh, Ron DeSantis ran in 2018, they were like more MAGA than almost any other candidate that ran the cycle. So they're not, they, he doesn't want to be seen as the anti-Trump guy where people all over on the, on the left wing of the Republican Party are coming out and endorsing him. Having someone in there like Liz Cheney will maybe pull some of the fire from people who don't like, uh, who do like Trump and are annoyed with the anti-Trump stuff instead of having to be Ron DeSantis, the guy, who's the guy who's criticizing Trump all the time. Just strategically in there, that prob- having someone from that wing of the party probably helps uh, Ron DeSantis. Uh, next up, someone from the same wing of the party. And ha- again, no, ab- absolutely no chance to win here. John Kasich. Now, John Kasich I did okay. Uh, in his own state, and then that was the end of it. He was terrible and an absolute, he, he is also, I mean, I can't even, I don't want to get back into the 2016 thing, but he was a disaster. Um, 150 to one. Again, Liz Cheney has no chance to become president or the Republican nominee, but she has a better chance than John Kasich does. About 150 to one, there you go. This one's, I think, pretty surprising. Now, I just told you, all these people that, Let's be honest about it. Probably have no real chance of winning. I don't think Candace Owens is going to run for president. Uh, Lindsey Graham maybe has a chance. He's run before. He has a lot of connections. I don't know. But I don't think there's much chance of Lindsey Graham. Here's the first guy you'd look at and you'd say he'd probably be on some sort of list. uh, And that person is Greg Abbott, the governor here in Texas. But he's the same at 151 as John Kasich and Liz Cheney. Now, Abbott a little bit overlooked because of the Ron DeSantis thing, but remember, it was Abbott's plan to send immigrants to the Northeast that was very much loved by conservatives. And Abbott, while he didn't win by 19 points, blew out a you know, arguably a better candidate in Beto O'Rourke by 12 here in Texas. It's a pretty easy win. Didn't really sweat much doing it. You'd think he'd be in the picture here for Republican nominee, but 150 to one. Another one from Texas, Dan Crenshaw. Now, Crenshaw had a big, um, you know, had a decent amount of buzz back in the day when the whole Saturday Night Live thing goes on. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed this. I don't follow Crenshaw from a day-to-day basis. It definitely seems like the Republican base has sort of turned on him. I honestly don't know. I don't follow him closely enough to to really know what he's done wrong or whether he's good or bad. Uh, But 150 uh, to one on Dan Crenshaw, number 18. Now, number 17 is another guy you don't think has any chance of actually running. He's very happy, I think, in the private sector right now. But Paul Ryan, 125 to one. Of course, he ran for VP in 2012, but he's been ejected. Like some of these, I think, are just like the sports book wants to collect money. So... Some, somebody's going to bet on Paul Ryan at 125 to 1, but I don't think he's going to be uh, the nominee. Someone who may very well run and jump into this race is next. And it's someone you like, and I think someone many uh, in the audience would consider voting for. That's Rand Paul. Rand Paul, who was never really got going in 2016 as a candidate, uh, although he would, I would have been very happy with him as the nominee. Uh, he wound up um, not doing all that well and dropping out. But he fig- he fig- he's in this race right now at 100 to 1, the odds of him winning. You can win 100 times your money, Rand Paul. I think anybody here that has a who might jump into the race is interesting, right? Rand Paul just won his election handily. Um, you know, you get 100, 100 to 1 odds for someone who's just going to be in the race. Maybe that's worth a flyer. Anyway, number 15 is another one here. And, and what's interesting about number 15 is he really got swallowed up by the Ron DeSantis thing. Uh, Ron DeSantis won by, I think, 19 points. He won against a much better candidate. Charlie Crist is a disaster. Val Demings was on the VP shortlist uh, for the Biden administration. And Marco Rubio blew, blew her out by 17 points. 
Uh, and he's at 100 to 1. That's the first one I think maybe he got some value there. I mean, Rubio left the race back in 2016, and most people thought, you know, it didn't work for him. He didn't quite get there. Trump is a phenomenon that, you know, no one could, could get over that hump, obviously, in 2016. But he performed relatively well in some of those races and didn't embarrass himself, I don't think. Marco Rubio, 100 to 1. Here, the next one up is pretty interesting. We're in the 14th. We're going through the Republican nominee possibilities, by the way, from a sports book uh, it, uh, overseas. It, number 14 is Tucker Carlson at 75 to 1. Now, Tucker has said he doesn't want to run for president, but he has a huge audience. He's probably one of the most influential people in Republican politics. He obviously represents a more nationalist, populist sort of wing of the party uh, and, uh, you know, commands quite a bit of attention. So you could see that being possible. Uh, number 13. Oh, gosh, I don't even want him to win his Senate seat in 2024 because I would like him to be defeated in the primary, but it's Mitt Romney. Now, Romney really likes Mitt Romney. I mean, Mitt Romney's a huge fan of Mitt Romney and really wants to be president. I don't think he's going to run again, but uh, who knows? 75 to 1 for Mitt Romney. Uh, here's the other guy we were talking about a little while ago, Larry Hogan. Hogan was a very popular governor in uh, Maryland, but, you know, was basi- uh, for all intents and purposes, basically a Democrat, maybe a little more business friendly than a normal Democrat. Uh, Larry Hogan at number 12, uh, 75 to 1. Get a lot of different things. We may have lost the Larry Hogan card. And honestly, you should probably lose it, too, because he's not going to be the nominee. Um, (laughs) Number 11, another guy who ran for president, another governor, another man who is overweight. That's Chris Christie. Chris Christie at 75 to 1. Now, Chris Christie, I would not be surprised at all if Chris Christie runs. He, you want to talk about somebody who loves himself, Chris Christie loves himself some Chris Christie, really likes hearing himself talk, is on all the mainstream media stuff all the time because he's the, now he's turned, even though he was basically serving in the Trump administration for uh, for a time during the transition, has now kind of turned into an anti-Trump guy and saying that Trump is bad. Media, of course, loves that stuff, so they've been eating it up. And he's been eating almost everything around him for many, many decades. But I don't know if uh, there's any chance, in fact, I don't think there is, that Chris Christie could be the nominee. Someone who very well might run. And I don't know, is there passion for Ted Cruz as a potential candidate? He's in the top 10. He cracks the top 10 at 50 to 1 odds. And I don't know, is it completely insane that Ted Cruz could make another run? He has endeared himself, I think, to the base. He did not do particularly well in the uh, in the battle versus Donald Trump, but he did beat everybody else in 2016. I mean, people kind of forget that he basically finished second uh, to uh, to Donald Trump. I mean, Kasich waited until Cruz uh, lost an important state. I think it was Indiana. And then uh, Kasich dropped out after Cruz dropped out. But basically, Cruz finished second. He's, I think, endeared himself to the base more, maybe even uh, ever since he had the falling out with Trump in 2016. He's been on board. And so number 10, Ted Cruz, and he may very well run. Everybody says this next guy's going to run in the uh, top 10. He's at number nine is Mike Pompeo. Everybody seems to say he's going to run. Now, I don't think there's any passion for Mike Pompeo to be president, particularly with Donald Trump in the race. You could see Pompeo being a VP type of candidate, potentially for Trump, if you wanted to go that direction. Uh, they obviously trust each other uh, at some level, and it could be interesting, I guess, maybe. But I think it's, the odds are very, very long. Uh, much uh, 50 to 1 is not a value uh, for me, for Mike Pompeo. Next up, she was kind of one of the big stars of the pandemic era. Then there was a falling out with the base. Uh, For whatever reason, Uh, it went around with the athletics and gender stuff. You know, she claimed she you know, was okay on this. And a lot of people bashed her for it anyway. Christy Nome. Now, Christy Nome never shut down her state. People really like that. She's obviously a telegenic candidate. She's very well spoken. She knows what she's talking about. And she was just reelected handily in her state of South Dakota. South Dakota, not exactly the center of all American presidential candidates. Uh, Don't always see that. Uh, But 50 to 1. Uh, Christy Nome at number eight. Another guy who may very well run for president, uh, again from the pop- populist sort of nationalist wing of the party at number seven, Josh Hawley. Hawley at 50 to one. Now, Hawley's had some issues with, uh, he obviously was mocked you know, wildly for the January 6th picture. Uh, you know, he was uh, one of the guys who kind of fighting against uh, some of the election uh, stuff uh, in the uh, Senate that day. 
that doesn't matter to mo- most of the people in the base. He, people kind of see him as an extension, a younger extension of the Trump wing of the party. And Josh Hawley may very well run. A lot of these guys are going to jump in just to get their name recognition up. He's at 50 to 1. I mentioned him earlier. The other senator from South Carolina, uh, African-American Senator Tim Scott. And I, re- I include African-American Senator because I don't know that Tim Scott is well known enough around the country uh, to to necessarily get this nomination. Uh, but, you know, he may very well be the, you know, the only African-American in this race, and uh, that will be noted by the media, as they like to do. Uh, 40 to 1 for Tim Scott. And look, Tim Scott's a pretty good senator. Uh, he has, probably deserves a little bit more uh, than, than he receives attention-wise. Uh, he's at 40 to 1. Another person everybody says is going to run is at 30 to 1. It's Nikki Haley. Now, Haley was one of the darlings of the Republican Party for a time. Seemingly, the base has fallen out of love with her. She obviously uh, served in the uh, Trump administration. She's at number five, 30 to one. If you saw the interview yesterday, ABC News had it. Uh, He's got a book coming out. It definitely seems like Mike Pence is going to give this a go. And he's at 30 to one as well. It's really hard for me to see the path for Pence. If you say, hey, I'm Mike Pence. I was in the Trump administration. Here's all the good things about the Trump administration without the bad things. That's going to be his pitch. But I think the Trump base turned on him. I mean, look, he was loyal to Trump every single day until the very last day where Trump wanted him to do the January 6th thing. And he correctly, in my mind, uh, did not do it. It would be an insane policy to have the vice president turn over to overturn the presidential election. And we should all think about that because, you know, right now the vice president is Kamala Harris. So we do not want the vice president in control of our elections. Uh, so he's at 30 to one. Uh, an interesting one this high in the number three position is Glenn Youngkin, obviously governor of Virginia, a guy who's capable of winning in a purplish leaning blue state. So he's got that going on for him. 30 to one. He's a big, uh, a big, uh, I'm surprised he's number three, to be honest. I mean, he's only been governor for about a year, but seems to have a good, uh, good handle on how to run a good campaign, able to appeal to some of the pieces of the party that have fallen off over the past couple of years. So Glenn Youngkin at number three, that leaves us the number number one and number two. And, and of course, you know who these two people are. Question is, what do betting markets right now think is the the number one candidate? Who is winning? Is it Donald Trump? Is it Ron DeSantis? A lot of disagreement on this. And honestly, I've looked at this for a very long time. I like looking at the odds on this stuff. You know, I'm a numbers geek and I have never seen anything other than Donald Trump at the top of this list. But at number two, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, eight to five odds. Uh, he is obviously I think he I think he goes into this race as the favorite. The betting markets disagree with me on that. Uh, he is eight to five to win the nomination. Uh, you know, like I don't know that there was a ton of energy behind the announcement as far as like excitement. Uh, there were, you know, looking just judging by online and, and basic things like that. A lot of people look at Trump and say, well, we love Trump, but, you know, I don't know. We kind of want to move on. There is definitely that sort of thing that's out there. But he is number two, the odds eight to five. And finally, number one, no surprise here after you hear number two, but Ron DeSantis, the favorite. I mean, look, his results were very, very good. Is he proven on a national stage to run this kind of uh, this kind of campaign? We've never seen him, obviously, in that situation. One advantage Ron DeSantis brings to the table that Donald Trump does not is the next generation sort of factor. And I think that is important. One of the things that's interesting about DeSantis is because because of how bad Joe Biden is and the idea that Biden is really, really old. Well, you can't really fight that battle all that well with Donald Trump because he's only a few years younger. Ron DeSantis does come off as a totally different generation of politician. And if he can keep things together, he is, according to betting markets, the favorite to be the Republican nominee in 2024. So it was really kind of incredible that uh, one really big election has flip-flopped those two at the top. There's your big, big, big fat list of candidate possibilities for 2024. Hopefully we can take a break, a vacation from having to talk about 2024 for a while. But with President Trump's big announcement, we wanted to get on it today. We'll talk to Glenn a little bit about this as well. Glenn Beck is going to be joining us here in just a second. Inflation continues to be a plague on our economy, our families, our savings, and the responsible spending is gone. 
uh, in, in Washington. The left is just going to be completely irresponsible and exacerbate the problem. This year we witness almost every kind of negative economic record from empty grocery store shelves to 40 year high inflation. Don't let your savings wither away. Hedge against inflation with gold from Birch Gold. All you got to do is text STU to 989898. That's my name, STU to 989898. You get your free info kit on diversifying into gold. Plus, you can become eligible for a free gold bar with every purchase that you make through December 22nd. With almost 20 years experience at converting IRAs and 401ks uh, into 401ks and precious metal IRAs, look, they're going to help you do this the right way. Birch Gold knows how to do it. Don't allow the left to devalue your savings. Text STU to 989898. Claim your free info kit from Birch Gold. You don't own physical gold and silver and a tax-sheltered retirement account. And Birch Gold will help you do it. Once again, STU, that's me. Text my name to 989898. Claim your free info kit on gold and ensure your eligibility for a free gold bar with every purchase. Secure your future with gold from Birch Gold. Joining me once again, Glenn Beck. He's got a new special coming up, 9 p.m. Eastern. Stop, stop, stop. Do it, do it, do it better. Do, do, it, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Okay. Uh, coming we'll up. edit this out later. Yeah. Uh, all right, here comes uh, Glenn Beck. He's got a special at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, be sure to stay tuned. Wow. It's called Targets of Tyranny, How to Survive there Being an Enemy State. Was that okay? No hope for you. No hope? No hope for you. And this comes no. directly from a Radio Hall of Fame yes. member. But yes. television really ignored you. They, 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 they don't think you've done a good job at all on television. Why is that? I know. Hmm. I know. I think I have the wrong political band. Really? I think that's what it is. Well, you got into the Radio Hall of Fame. There's yeah. lots of liberals in the Radio Hall of Fame, no, I would imagine. No, not really. No. I mean, mm -hmm. it, I'm, no. They're in the entertainment side, but they're there. <laughs> they're there. Um, by the way, blazetv.com slash Glenn. You can use the promo code STANDUP, and you can save 30 bucks off the Blaze TV subscription. And also help Glenn pay for the gigantic special he's put together, which costs a fortune, and he wants to also give away for free on YouTube for some inexplicable reason. Glenn, <laughs> welcome to the program. I think this is important information. Yes, I know. This is important information. Let me ask you about... Um, and I will not be wearing this jacket, by the way. I won't. Which which one? You've got like twelve of them. I've on. got two. I've got a vest mm -hmm. and a shirt and a jacket. That's it. It's cold. I know it's cold. It's cold because you keep the no, temperature. No, I mean outside. In here, it's perfect. Let me a ask you hot. one question about this special to start, mm -hmm. which is I th I find to be an interesting one. I haven't, I haven't asked you about yet, which is the timing of it. We're just coming off an, an election. Yeah. Right. It's right before Thanksgiving. The timing of this makes me think you think it's urgent and to get this information out. Oh, it is. Here's here's what we discussed. They said, Glenn, um, if we win, then people are not going to think that it's that urgent. Right. You know, maybe we should wait till next year. And I said, the Republicans, it's the Republicans you're counting on. Mm. So mm, let's just say we don't win. <laughs> this is months ago. Yeah. Let's just say. It's not what we expected. Uh, then people will probably still be in the mindset uh, of, gee, okay, things aren't changing. And I do think this is uh, paramount. What you will learn tonight in the special, you'll not only see four cases that could easily be any of us, easily. You will see that the DOJ is now making uh, the process the punishment. So it doesn't matter even if you've done anything. They're making the process the nightmare, okay? They apparently learned a lot from, you know, the South in the 1950s because they're using a lot of the same tactics mm. and they're trying to scare people. And we don't know our rights. We don't know them. I got a right to remain silent. <laughs> I can say that. I got a right. You can't do that. I got a right. Well, what happens when they say, and they have guns, yeah, no, that doesn't apply here. Do you know? Do you know what to do if the FBI or the ATF comes at you and they're breaking the law? In many of the cases, you'll see this ATF uh, woman comes in. She's on film breaking the law. They don't care. They don't care. Um, I, I think this is a really important special because conservatives, we've just always assumed the law is on our side. Not anymore. Um, 
I think we know enough about our legal system, basically just from different shows like Law and Order, <laughs> yeah. Dragnet, like yeah. whatever whatever phrases they use. That's all we. Right. Are, Those we, are you know? TV shows. Those are TV yeah. shows. Yeah. Uh, well, so is yours. Yeah. Uh, to be okay. honest. Okay. So a little different. You got to learn a little bit from this TV <laughs> yeah. show. Um, the stories are really amazing here. These are, you said stories that could happen to any of us. And, and I think a lot of us are like, okay, well, you know, what's going to happen? But this is like, these are real stories that have just hit ran- this random is, people. This is a, uh, a guy who has two sons. He gets a divorce. His wife starts insisting that his son wants to be a girl. He, the son says, no, I don't. Testifies, I don't. I, I want to be a boy. Testifies. And the judge says, oh, he's only saying that because dad wants him to say that. Okay? But when you see the film of him as, gosh, I think he's four, and he's saying, um, are you a girl? And he's like, yeah, I'm a girl. Really? How come you say that? Mommy told me to say that. Oh, so mommy told you you're a girl. Yeah, she makes me wear dresses and things. Okay, it's mm. it's incomprehensible. And that that kid is now in California and just days away from being protected by the state. And mom is going through with a sex change operation. Okay, mm. on this kid. It's crazy. You have... ATF coming into a gun store, doing all kinds of things illegal, saying you've got several people here that have bought several guns, uh, these gun uh, gun nuts. And the on tape, the guy says, well, we prefer to say that they're uh, gun enthusiasts. And she said, no, they're nuts. And then takes pictures of all of that on her own private phone, illegal for a myriad of reasons. He's lost his gun license. Um, we have uh, the women, uh, the, the um, husband and wife up in Alaska. FBI came, broke down their door, said that you were in Washington, you stole Nancy Pelosi's uh, laptop. And they're like, we didn't even go into the Capitol. They were only on the ground for a few minutes. Um, and they, they didn't take uh, the laptop. What's, what we don't talk about, and you should notice, because we'll probably talk about it tomorrow, is the FBI had a photo of somebody they thought took the laptop. She didn't even go into the Capitol. But somehow or another, the FBI compared a photo of her, because she was in town, to a photo of somebody who was in the Capitol. And they do look alike, but luckily, it came down to the earlobes. She's not the woman. But what's crazy is, how did that happen? How did they run that picture and get her picture from Alaska. Mm. The, the information that they have access to, and that's one of the last things we talk about, the FBI, they are now in bed with Amazon. They hold all of the national security secrets. The, um, uh, the uh, NSA has a lot of their um, information in uh, Amazon data banks. Which brings us to another one where Amazon told the Justice Department this guy broke the law, even though he didn't. They arrest. They, I'm sorry. They took all of his money, his house, his wife's money, his father's money, Mm. took it all, and never charged him with a crime. For two years, Amazon went back and forth trying to say he committed a crime. And they said, no, he hasn't. But they still did Amazon's bidding and destroyed this family. It, it's remarkable. The stories are, are enough, honestly, for the special. But you kind of have an expanded couple of hours here. Because you're also talking about what do you do if this stuff yeah. happens to you? I, I really don't think people have any concept of that. Because the only person I've ever, I've ever talked to who thought this way was Jeffy. Because Jeffy, I think, basically constantly, you know, believes yeah, he's going to be arrested, arrested at any moment that he's done. And he really did. Th- he was like, you got you to say this. you got to say this. He had a card in his pocket that was like, you have to yeah. say that. You have to call your, call your lawyer. All these things. But, like, the normal average person, like, I don't think I'm ever going to have an interaction with the police that's going to be negative or the FBI or the DOJ. That's not going to happen to me. That's definitely how I feel. I just know intellectually I better get prepared for it because things are changing. Yeah, I, I, I would be... 
um, surprised if we make it through our lives without an encounter. Well, with, especially because I work for you. I, if I did yeah. not work here, I would be much more confident about it. Yeah. Um, but you're on a list. We're all on a list. And what's truly remarkable is the father who is fighting for his son not to become a girl. Um, he was given a gag order and told, you're not allowed to talk to the press. You're not allowed to talk to doctors. You're not allowed to talk to anybody about this. What? And he said, screw you. Tonight when this airs, the judge will see it and he's willing to go to jail to tell this story tonight. All of them said about halfway through, I said, are you guys worried about the ramifications? And they kind of laughed like, of course, we know there's gonna be massive ramifications for coming on this show and saying this, mm. but bring it on. These people are warriors. Mm. Um, before you go, uh, big story uh, last night, Donald Trump announces he's going yeah. to be running for president. You, uh, I don't know, you kind of went viral last week when all of this was happening because there is this split, right? Some people are siding with Ron DeSantis, some people are siding with Donald Trump. And you kind of think maybe that's not the right way of thinking of this. Yeah, I would rather be, I'd rather have Barry Goldwater and Ronald Reagan. Um, so I think... Uh, I'll take Trump, vote for him. He's got a proven record. I think it might be harder to win as Donald Trump. Uh, because of the media backlash and stuff. Yeah, the media yeah. backlash. And I think people, um, they're going to just do the same. They started today, do the same thing. And people don't like going backwards. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like going forwards. But I thought he did a really good job in being forward yes. in his message yeah. last mm -hmm. night. But yeah. I'll also take Ron DeSantis. I, and I'll take... Trump as the president, I'll take him as Speaker of the House, I'll take him as just a good advisor, I'll take Ron DeSantis as Governor of Florida, a vice presidential candidate, I'll take him as uh, the president in four years from now or today, I don't care. I like both of these fighters. Do you think there's going to be a large field? That, that surrounds... If there I mean, is, we we're assume, in so much trouble. We assume both of these guys are going to run. Obviously, Trump's already in. DeSantis yeah. can't yeah. do this for a while. I've heard that there's as many as nine that are coming, but most of them are running for vice president. Right. They don't intend... They're, they're people with little name recognition, maybe, yeah. just trying to grow the profile. Yeah. I, I think one of the good things that Donald Trump could do right now is announce Carrie Lake. Really? Yeah. Just well, say she's well, Carrie Lake lost, though. No, it I know. That's that why way, she has least. time on her hands to do it. Um, <laughs> you know, she's unproven, etc. But yeah. she is a darling of that crowd. Mm -hmm. She's very, very loyal to him. Mm -hmm. um, she is a good communi communicator. Excellent. She could be vice president and uh, press secretary. <laughs> right, right. Um, but uh, she is, she's, I think, really good. Um, and uh, I think would help him a lot. But be, he I mean, needs something new. We've never really seen that. This, I mean, the only time I can ever remember anyone doing this was Ted Cruz with Carly Fiorina Correct. in 2016. And that was a Hail Mary pass. Yeah, and it was. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of a last-minute thing. Right. Where he was already well behind. But doing it, announcing I, this early. I, I think, I mean, if I were running, I would have... All of my people, in fact, even if I were standing on a stage and they're debating and they want to be president, I would say, you know, I know he'll maybe insulted by this because he wants to be considered president, but that's who I'm going to ask to be my vice president. And <laughs> I also have this person and this person and this person and this person. I, I think, I mean, what is sacred anymore that you can't break the rules? Yeah, you could yeah. just... You could announce the team and say, really, we're going to fix the economy because this person is on my team. And the one time Trump did that, it worked well, which was the Supreme yeah. Court. Yes. Right? Like he yes. said, here's the tw list of 25 I'm going to pick from or 22, whatever it was. And he, you know, his first pick was from that list. Yeah. So because you generally what I think people remember are the crazy people that were with him at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And those, he got out pretty quickly. Um, so he needs to come with a, a bench. But is anybody willing to spend the next two years of their life being just torn apart 
for someone who might lose. For somebody who might lose. Mm, That's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. It's a lot to ask. Well, the special tonight is something you do not want to miss. Uh, It's a big deal. Targets of tyranny. How to survive being an enemy of the state is coming up at 9 p.m. Eastern right here on Blaze TV. Also, you can go to blazetv.com slash Glenn if you want to subscribe. Use the promo code STANDUP and save 30 bucks off your subscription. Parts of this will also be on YouTube, uh, at least the parts that they'll, you, know, you can get on there without getting tossed off Yeah, because <laughs> that's always a problem. Uh, make sure to subscribe, though, to Blaze TV because it's a big deal. And if you want more of these specials, it's really important that people sign up or Glenn will just bankrupt the company. Uh, <laughs> Glenn, thanks so much for coming you on. Bet. <laughs> Well, realestateagentsitrust.com is another company that Glenn may someday bankrupt. It's uh, one that's been very successful, though. Why? Why has it been successful? Well, people don't know what they're doing when it comes to picking a real estate agent. You kind of have this situation where you, you pick someone that you know, or maybe a friend of a friend, or who did you work with? Or the worst one is going online, picking the house that you like, and then clicking the name below the house and saying, oh, that person is representing that house. Now, they're representing the seller. You need to make sure you have someone on your side as well. Whoever you, uh, whatever you're doing, whether it's uh, buying or selling a home, no matter where you're moving inside the United States, you got to get an agent from realestateagentsitrust.com. They're the best agents in your area. Just give them some basic info and the team will contact you to make an introduction to the preferred agent in your town. It's realestateagentsitrust.com. Go there now, get the right agent for you at realestateagentsitrust.com. And now it's time for another episode of Idiots Gluing Themselves to Things. Oh, oh, they have more we stuff on a painting. Or the glass on side of a painting. And the, gir- the I, girl or man, why would I judge? She, he is gluing his hand again to, to a painting. And that's supposed to make you think of global warming or something. Um, this is... Honestly, one of the greatest things that's ever happened to me is that they keep doing this. I love it. I'll do a segment on it every day if I can. And it's mainly because it does nothing, doesn't harm the paintings because there's always glass in front of them. And then these idiots just have glue on their hands and no one changes anything about global warming. It's just all all together we get to see idiots gluing themselves to things with absolutely no cost to me or you. I love it. I want to tell you about preborn clinics and the amazing work they're doing introducing expecting mothers to their babies via of ultrasounds to help them choose life over abortion. If a parent gets an ultrasound, a mom hears the heartbeat of their baby and they were thinking, ah, maybe we'll do abortion. A lot of times they change themselves over. It's something like 70 or 80 percent of, of people say, you know what, actually, let's keep this baby alive. That's that's life. And we know it. You can sponsor an ultrasound and help make that introduction for just $28, or you can give $140 and be the proud sponsor of five ultrasounds. Preborn will even match your donation. You're saving lives doing this. Uh, We want to save 50,000 babies this year. Uh, Can you help? Can you help us? To donate, dial pound 250, say the keyword baby. It's pound 250, use the keyword baby, or donate securely at preborn.com slash do. It's so important. Please help preborn.com slash stew. So you know the story about the missile that landed in Poland, Poland, a NATO country. If Poland's attacked by Russia, we are bound by treaty to get involved in this thing. So we don't want that to happen. The missile killed a couple people in Poland. It's a pretty serious issue. The initial reports were this is a Russian missile and it's a huge deal. Um, Then that has now changed. Now they're saying it was a Ukrainian missile. They're trying to knock down a missile from Russia, missed or went to rise somehow, landed in Poland. Uh, Everyone take a deep breath. Could be true. I think it's a good possibility that it's true. Could also be that maybe a Russian missile went awry, hit landed in Poland and we're like, you know, let's just say it's Ukrainian uh, because we don't want to escalate this any further. Could have been a rogue missile from Russia. Who knows what is going on uh, here, but maybe there's a possibility that we're talking to Russia enough that they can say, look, we didn't mean to do that. We're not trying to attack Poland and we would back off. Could also just be the Ukrainian uh, explanation as well. If we get more information, we will let you know. Don't forget, you can join us in studio in just a few weeks. December 9th, the Stu Does America Christmas Party Power Hour 2022. It's at StuDoesPowerHour.com. Go there and sign up.